All right, people, back at it again. Uh, today for the controls class, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have like a, a throwback Thursday, uh, even though this class is on a Wednesday. Uh, we're going to have throwback Thursday uh, type of uh, material. Uh, we're going to start off with some basic components. Make sure you remember how to do this so I can give you a pop quiz before spring break. Hopefully I didn't say that out loud. Anyway, uh, here we go, right? We're going to start off with the transformer. If you remember our good old transformer, uh, you'll know that it's our power source for our low voltage side typically, right? Um, it is how we get uh, high voltage to low voltage, right? It's rated in VA, if you remember to look on the side of it, right? Uh, here's one. Uh, you can see right there uh, as you go in, this is a 40 VA transformer, right? It's a 40 volt amp transformer, uh, and that's sim simply uh, voltage time amperage, right? So this 40 VA transformer, um, we know uh, typically we're going to have a step down transformer, and it's going to be stepping down the high voltage coming in into the unit to give us our low voltage um, power source. So it's going to step down to 24 volts. Uh, but the importance of the VA uh, and that rating is basically how many amps can our low voltage power source support uh, and that formula is written here you have your uh, 40 VA uh, and we're basically uh, to figure out how many amps uh, that transformer can handle before you overload it uh, you divide your your VA rating by your low voltage power uh, source so uh, 40 VA divided by 24 volts is going to give us roughly uh, 1.66 amps and that is the maximum that you want to put uh, on your low voltage side of the system. Uh, and low voltage loads, that's your reversing valve, your contactor coil, your heat relay coil, your thermostat, uh, control, excuse me, control boards. Anything on the low voltage side that consumes power um, is going to draw it off of the secondary side of the transformer. Okay, so you have to make sure that your transformer is capable enough to, to power everything without overloading it. Okay, that's the reason we have that fuse that protects the transformer. Uh, typically it's a three or a five amp fuse, uh, but even that is, um, you know, according to the formula is too big. So just a couple quick notes about it. Um, the primary side, right? Uh, we have two transformer uh, types, uh, step up and a step down. Uh, if, uh, if I need power to go up in say an oil furnace, uh, that's 120 volt appliance, but I need roughly 12,000 plus volts to get uh, the oil ignited properly. So uh, in an oil furnace, we use a step-up transformer. Power comes in 120 volts and it goes into the transformer for the uh, the oil furnace uh, ignition part, right? It, it comes out like 12,000. So it steps the voltage up uh, from the primary to the secondary. The primary will have uh, X number of uh, uh, wraps on the winding and in a step-up transformer, the secondary side has more. We typically see what's at the bottom of the paper here, uh, a step down transformer. We typically bring 120 volts in and step it down to 24 volts. If you have a 120 volt power supply and you need 120 volts, you don't need a transformer. You just use the power supply. So transformers, they do exactly that. They transform. They give us exactly uh, what we need uh, when we don't have you know that particular power source available. So that's how we do it. So I'm going to move this out the way. Oh, man. All right. So we have our transformer here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. Uh, and you can see uh, I've got another one actually as well. I've got two of them here. Um, these are both uh, 40 volt amp rated capacitors. Uh, they both have 120 volts on the primary side. You can see that up top here. Uh, and they step that down to 24 volts down here on the secondary side, okay? Uh, and you can read it, primary 120 volts, secondary is going to be 24 volts, okay? So this is a step-down transformer, clearly. Um, it's rated at 40 VA. Like I said, we'll fuse it to protect the power source, uh, and that's the reason we use fuses anyway, is to protect the power source uh, and the wires, okay? Um, but it's real simple, okay? How do you check your, your transformer, right? Uh, there we go. For a transformer to work properly, right? Let me get this one out of the way. 
for a transformer to work properly, you have to have power come in on the primary side and that will induce a voltage to the secondary side, right? It's a magnetic field in between here. Uh, the two windings, the two, uh, the, the primary and the secondary winding in a transformer never physically touch. They are separated. So the power that you apply on the primary side will make power on the secondary side. Step up, step down, doesn't matter. Uh, the ratio of windings from one side to the other one is what causes the step up and step down. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn my meter on here. Um, what happens if you don't get power out of the transformer? Well, you have to check power going into the transformer. Okay, um, what if you have power in the transformer, 120 volts in this case, um, but there's nothing coming out? Okay. Well, uh, you always start with voltage, right? You want to take your leads and verify that you have voltage there, right? So if we had 20 or 120 volts here, I would check over here. Yeah, and I should have 24 volts. But what if I have nothing, okay? That's when you need to turn the power off. You need to unplug the wires, and we're going to come in, and we're going to ohm out each side, right? So here on my secondary side... I have one, uh, one ohm basically. Um, that's good. That means that the winding is intact. I do have a resistance there. It's not overload or, or open line, I should say, and it's not zero. Okay, it's it's actually a number. Um, you could also check the primary side, um, and in this case, I have right at 20, 25 ohms or so. Yeah, 19, 20 ohms. Okay. Uh, if either one of these show zero like this, right? If you if you had OL, you can still apply power, but if the winding is not a complete circuit, right? You're not you're not doing anything. It's a broken circuit, and we all know that broken circuits don't do anything. So you uh, you ohm out primary and the secondary. You should have a, a a real number, something above zero, but not in the OL range like we have on our screen now. OL means there's nothing in between these two leads. Zero means there's something there, but it has no resistance, okay? Uh, just like this, this, this is going to be, yeah, see now we're working our way to zero. I'm trying to hold it so that it makes a uh, good contact, okay? But, but if two leads touch and there's really nothing there, that's bad. If the two leads don't touch, you know, the, the signal never passes from one to the other one, that's bad as well. So I think y'all remember that one. Um, that's it. I'm going to stop this one and, and we'll do another one.